it is time to unlearn hate. That is the purpose of my work, to help people to unlearn hate. When you begin to hear the stories, you can relate to them because you're a human being. I'm Vinnie Bagwell, and I create art for public places about marginalized people of color. I discovered sculpting and it was like magic and the rest is kind of history. It's not enough to make something that's pretty. I want it to speak. I want it to speak volumes. I came up with a technique of creating a central sculpture and then I use bar relief to extend the narrative. It also makes you engage the piece. You have to walk around it and look for what is she trying to say? Where's the story? What does that mean? I looked around my community and all I saw was desert presidents and war heroes. I didn't see any artwork about people of color. I, I didn't see any artwork about women. I didn't see any artists. I didn't see anything. And of course, Ella is our greatest claim to fame here. There are a lot of really amazing people that came from Yonkers, um, but most people, black and white, know Ella Fitzgerald and she's very well loved. Luckily, she's at the Yonkers Metro North train station, so people coming to Yonkers get to see her and, you know, she's visible. And amazingly, it turned out to be the first sculpture of a contemporary African-American woman to be commissioned by a municipality. There were no sculptures of black women in the United States until I made that sculpture, which sounds crazy, but it was true. I wanted a urban heritage sculpture garden. I wanted a rain garden. The enslaved African's rain garden should be on the trail. It's, it's a major story. Thank you, George Latimer. It was a no-brainer for him to say, yes, let me help you finish this up. Westchester County made it possible to finish. They paid for construction. So the enslaved African's rain garden became Isati, an iconic woman carrying a bucket on her head because African women do that. Temple of the Boatman, an extraordinary story because these were the most revered enslaved Africans. They weren't even treated like they were enslaved because they knew how to navigate the ocean. Bibi, the godmother, the grandmother, the elder woman. And then there are children, because most of the enslaved Africans that came to New York were children, so you have a boy and a girl. Most of the public art that you see in this country, 99% of it is done by white men. Less than 5% is done by women. And less than all that is done by black people. That has to change, because we're trying to balance the narrative. And so the enslaved African rain garden was designed to do that for Yonkers, for Westchester, for New York State. I'm trying to humanize people of color trying to humanize people who were enslaved. They're not slaves. You don't call these people slaves. They were enslaved. These are African people who were ripped from their homes and their families and taken across an ocean to work for the rest of their lives, one generation after another. I'm talking about 400 years of enslaving a group of people because of their skin color. The enslaved African's rain garden is taking its place in the lake but there are other links that will be added. There are more stories that are going to be told. So that trail is going to get longer. And I'm proud and I'm excited. I'm serving a really good purpose. I'm representing my race and I'm telling our stories because we too made a tremendous contribution to this country. So there's a lot of work to be done um, and I'm just really happy to be in a position to do it. <laughs>